This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I am sure you have been wondering every single day for weeks, when is Lambden going to check out that sleep railroad? Well, today is the day. Let's get to it. It's called All Aboard the Sleep Railroad. Take it away, Jasmine. Remember, there are no pictures. You'll have to imagine them in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. Lambden could not sit still in weaving class. He tapped his hoof against the floor. He doodled in the margin of his paper. He fidgeted in his seat. He scratched at his wool, and he hummed under his breath. His seatmate, Wulsandra, kept throwing him frustrated looks. Lambden, quit it. Lambden sighed. (sighs) He rested his head in his hoofs and tried to channel his nervous energy towards paying attention. When you weave with wool, the most important thing is... uh, Does anyone know? Professor Blinkwool, a guest speaker from the local Wool University, blinked her small eyes and glanced around the room. A lamb raised a hoof. Yes, you there... I'm sorry, I can't be expected to learn your names in five minutes, can I? Tell me what you think, dear. Is the most important thing to have fun? A scowl fell upon Professor Blinkwool's brow. Does anyone else have an idea? Uh, Yes, you. Is the most important thing not to give up? Professor Blinkwool looked as if she'd been spun up in a loom. Uh, Does anyone have a more technical answer? Yes, you in the back. When you're done weaving, you must gently agitate it in water with a small amount of mild detergent in order to finish your piece. Well done. At least some lamb in here knows something of use. But Lambden couldn't keep his attention on school. His mind was churning. His stomach was in knots. He was thinking about the choice he would have to make later at bedtime. It had been a month since Lambden had boarded the sleep bus. After the bus broke down in the middle of nowhere, billowing smoke and leaving the passengers shivering beneath blankets on the hard ground. The sleep crew made a big effort to get the sleep train back on track, so to speak. Issues were taken care of in advance. We can all thank our miraculous cleanup crew for taking care of the strawberry syrup spill all day yesterday, enabling us to enjoy. Mechanical problems were sorted quickly. Now then, after that brief five-minute fix from our engineering team, we are on our way. And the towering moose no longer longer found reasons to doubt Lambden's sleep seriousness. Welcome aboard, Lambden. I don't think I've ever seen you so drowsy. Oh, Seymour, watch your tail, my dear. We don't want anyone getting flicked, now do we? The sleep crew seemed more competent than ever these days. Still, Lambden had not been able to forget about the coupon for the sleep railroad. He'd kept it in his pocket every day so that the text faded with every swish of his pants. Excuse me, you, you with the dreamy look on your face, huh? Lambden shook out of his musings to see Professor Blinkwool glaring down at him. 
In her hoofs was a great ball of yarn. Young lamb, I asked you what type of yarn am I holding in my hoofs? Uh, Lambden looked around at his classmates, hoping for a clue. But they just stared at him, holding back laughter. Finally, he said, Llama? Professor Blinkwool sighed heavily, and looked around the class as if to say, See what I mean? Lambden's classmates giggled. This is synthetic yarn made from nylon, which you would have known had you been listening, even fractionally, for the last three minutes. Now then, students, this shows you that you must learn to distinguish. Lambden rested his head in his hoofs, returning to his meandering thoughts. The rest of the day proceeded inexorably towards bedtime. Lambden just wanted a little more time to consider his options, but alas, the day sped by. Soon he was ushered upstairs for bed. He brushed his teeth, fluffed his wool, and clomped into his bedroom. A sense of dread settling itself into all four compartments of his stomach. When he reached his bed, he withdrew the sleep railroad coupon from his pocket to study it for the thousandth time. As he did so, there was a rapping sound at his closed window. The dread in Lambden's stomach blossomed and spread from the tuft on his head to the soles of his hoofs. There was a skunk outside, grinning at him in that eager way sleep crew messengers always did. Part of Lambden was grateful for the distraction from the decision he had to make. He went to the window, intending to open it just enough to hear what the skunk had to say. But as soon as he'd unlocked the window and lifted it an inch, the skunk pushed it upwards and scrambled into Lambden's room. Hey! Lambden glared at the skunk. I was told to gain entry. Now I have. I have been sent by the... The sleep crew, I know. Was it Lambden's imagination, or did this skunk have a mildly threatening glint in his eye? As if, should Lambden ignore the skunk's words, he might be getting a whiff of more than just his sister's hoof lotion. Ahem, the skunk began, withdrawing a small pamphlet from his vest pocket. You are cordially invited to board the Increditastic. Huh? Marvelo Terrific. What? Technicologicalistic. These are not words. Sleep Rocket. Lambden's eyes went wide. Nope. No, that is not happening. Not now. Not ever. Lambden dashed to his pillow and peeled it back. There, shining brightly, was his usual button. All aboard our beautiful new sleep rocket. Buckle up for an out-of-this-orbit sleep adventure. Next to the button was the knob that would take him to the sleep railroad. Wait, it's Incredi Super and Magicological. Wait, I can tell you more things about it. It's, um, it's big. But wasn't it's all fast. of this Did inevitable? It it's practically a law of nature that when given a 50% off coupon to a mysterious sleep railroad, a little lamb will redeem that coupon. Lambden stretched out his hoof and turned the knob. Instead of a great swirling cloud... A puff of sparkling powder came bursting upwards from Lambden's pillow. He felt his eyes squeezing shut, and he let out a cough as the world around him disappeared into a sparkly haze. 
Lambden felt himself falling through space. Then, he landed against something with a bump and felt himself sliding downward on his back. As his vision adjusted to the darkness, he realized he was inside a tube. It was a slide, and beneath him was a steady stream of rushing water. Water? There was just enough light inside the slide for Lambden to make out the twists and turns before they reached him. There was a sharp turn ahead, and he felt himself going up, 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 and am I upside down? He was weightless for a second as the slide took him in a loop-de-loop. Then he sloshed right side up and saw a circle of light racing towards him. Whoa, whoa! Lambden went zooming towards the circle of light and came shooting out of the slide along with a spray of water. What just happened? Lambden looked down at his soaked outfit. It was then that he noticed he'd forgotten to change into pajamas. The last 60 seconds of his life had been so bizarre and so jarring, it took him a moment to remember he was somewhere at all. He peered into the darkness. He was in an underground tunnel, just like when he visited the sleep train. But it was a different tunnel. There were torches lit and propped up against the wall every few feet, allowing him to see the platform beneath his hoofs and the train tracks alongside it. There were no signs, no indication as to where he should go. He heard music drifting from behind him. Lambden turned and began walking in the direction of the sound. Whoa! Lambden walked right into a metal turnstile and nearly flipped over. He steadied himself, then pushed against the turnstile. Out of nowhere, dryers, enormous hair dryers, descended from the tunnel ceiling and started blasting warm air all over him, drying him head to foot. Next, a trio of bats swooped towards him, holding something bright red. Ah! The bats rushed around him, whooshing this way and that. Then they vanished behind him in the tunnel, carrying a bundle with them. What was that? Then he saw a flash of red and looked down. The bats had changed him into fuzzy red pajamas. Was it possible the sleep group would be even stranger than the sleep crew? Lambden patted the pockets of his pajamas. Hey, my coupon. He turned back the way he came, imagining himself climbing back up the water slide and redoing the entire night. Ugh, I can't get back up that slide. He continued on. The sleep railroad came into view. It was a modern train with a sleek, metallic exterior. For a moment, all Lambden could do was stare. He felt all of his worries, the doubt sparked by the unexpected water slide, the mildly creepy bats who changed him into pajamas. Everything fell away. The train was magnificent. Lambden took in the aerodynamic shape of the engine, the automatic doors that swished open, the spotless windows, the sparkling lights. There was a red carpet that stretched from where he stood to the steps of the railroad. It felt as though the entire scene was made just for him. Then he saw the towering moose. Lambden looked around, disoriented. Had he pressed his button? No, he had turned the knob. He was sure of it. But there she was, as towering as ever. Lambden felt his throat tighten. She'll know I went with the sleep crew's competitor. Then he realized she must have gone with the sleep crew's competitor, too. He had nothing to be embarrassed about. 
He laughed at his own folly. He approached the towering moose as she ushered passengers aboard. Hello, good evening. Step aboard, please. There you go. Hello, good evening. Step aboard, please. There you are. Good evening. Step aboard now. There you go. Lambden watched as the moose greeted each animal. She looked exactly the same as when she acted as the tour guide for the sleep crew, but there was something different he couldn't put his hoof on. Her voice was the same, but her demeanor and the things she said, Lambden was next. He stepped forward and smiled bashfully. I didn't expect to see you here. The moose peered down at Lambden without a hint of recognition. Hello, good evening. Step aboard, please. It's good to see you. Oh, I uh, had a coupon, but those bats... Your coupon has been applied. Step aboard, please. But Lambden remained fixed in place. Out of all the strange interactions he'd had with the towering moose, and he'd had quite a few, this was the strangest. Lambden tried to stretch himself upward to meet the moose's placid gaze, but he couldn't even get close. As he peered at her, something struck him. Have you always had that freckle? A line of animals was forming behind Lambden, and the moose's features were pricked with irritation. What's the hold up? I think he's new. Lambden noticed a knob jutting out from beside the open hatch of the train. The moose glanced at it nervously, and Lambden wondered if it was some kind of security alarm. I- I'm sorry, he said quickly. I just thought you'd remember me after all of our predicaments. The light of recognition fell upon the moose's features. Ah, I see. Are you a sleep train regular? Yes, Lambden said, relieved. My dear, you are confusing me with my sister. Your sister? This happens on occasion, though it puzzles me as we look nothing alike. And of course I'm older by two minutes. Now then, we're thrilled you've made the correct decision to travel with the sleep group. Don't worry, I won't mention this to her at Sunday dinner. Lambden was speechless. He nodded, squinting at the moose. Despite her protestations, and besides that one tiny freckle, they were identical. Step aboard, please. There you are. Lambden climbed the steps, unsettled. But as soon as he entered the interior of the sleep railroad, he felt hope swell in his chest. There were rows and rows of seats filled with sleepy animals. A squirrel wearing an eye mask here, a raccoon asleep in a furry curl over there. The train was filling up. Finally, he came to a seat towards the back of the car. He settled in next to a sweet-looking rabbit with floppy ears and a twinkle in her eye. Hello, she said, smiling. Hi. I can't wait until they come around with our socks. My feet are so cold. Lambden just smiled and nodded. The rest of the train filled up, and all at once, with little fanfare, it began moving through the tunnel. Next to Lambden, the rabbit put on her glasses and began to read a book about bicycle wheels. She saw him looking and grinned. Studying up in case I get picked, she said. In case you get picked, Lambden wondered, but he just smiled agreeably. Lambden felt some of the tension he'd been holding on to drift away. He closed his eyes and leaned into his seat 
telling himself he would give this new sleep vehicle a chance. Socks, neck pillow, came a faraway voice. Lambden blinked his eyes open to see the bottom half of a giraffe in the aisle. Huh? Lambden looked up and up, and he couldn't actually see the giraffe's head because it was sticking up through a hole in the ceiling. Socks, neck pillow, the giraffe repeated. The rabbit next to Lambden reached over to grasp a pair of socks and a neck pillow from the giraffe. Thank you. Lambden looked at the items. He didn't care for socks. They never fit well over his hoofs, but he figured he shouldn't start refusing items on his very first trip with the sleep group. Thank you, he said, allowing the giraffe to hand him a pair of socks and a neck pillow. Lambden tucked the socks into the pocket of the seat in front of him and put the neck pillow behind his head. Ow, Lambden muttered and put the neck pillow in his lap. He turned to his seatmate. Will they come around with blankets soon? The rabbit gave him a quizzical look. Blankets? Lambden frowned. No blankets? You should wear your socks. They're so unique. They have zippers. And with that, she zipped up her socks. Without his weighted blanket, Lambden felt exposed and cold. He tried to sink deeper into his pajamas, but it wasn't the same. To quell the doubts rising in his mind, he reminded himself of the sleep bus and how it broke down in the middle of nowhere and how he'd woken up with a crick in his neck. Hello. The speakers in the train's cabin crackled with the towering moose's identical twin's voice. We are now leaving the station. Enjoy the sights as we prepare for the first presentation of the evening. Lambden couldn't help but marvel at the similarity of the two moose's voices. It was uncanny, but the words she said were completely devoid of charm. Lambden found himself imagining the towering yes. moose's comments. Hello. We are so pleased to welcome you to this outrageously unique sleep experience. Take a gander out the right side of the train car, drink up that bedazzling half moon, and... Landon's daydream was interrupted by the soft whistle of the train as it eased to a stop. They had traveled out of the tunnel beneath a beautiful navy sky dappled with stars. Landon peered out the window beside him, but all he saw was darkness. We have used our lottery system to select the first speaker of the evening. Will Warren the Gecko please approach the lectern and begin? Huh? Lambden looked away from the train's window and watched as a small gecko crawled down the aisle and scrambled up a stool. A microphone was ready for him. Lambden turned to his seatmate who leaned back in her seat with her eyes closed. What's going on? Huh? Oh, the speeches are the best part of the ride, she said, blinking open her eyes for a moment, then closing them once again. The speeches? But Lambden hushed along with everyone else as the gecko began. Uh, hi. I'm going to talk about paint drying. A warm murmur spread through the passengers. They were pleased with this choice of topic. I love speeches about paint. I know. They put me out every time. Uh, paint comes in many colors. A lot of animals choose neutral colors for their home, like, I don't know, ecru or something. Anyway, so the paint is wet when it goes on the wall. Lambden glanced out the window next to him. But all he saw was the dark night sky, the half moon, and a never-ending stretch of land in all directions. He finally understood what was happening. There were not going to be any sleep performances outside this train. Instead, there would be boring speeches inside of it. Passengers all around him were already yawning and falling asleep.
At the microphone, the gecko was making an effort to be as boring as possible. It may take a few hours for the paint to dry. Some of it might dry quicker than other parts. Some animals have been known to turn on oscillating fans to speed up the drying process. Lambden felt his eyes grow heavy. This is really weird, he thought to himself, but somehow it's working. There was a small chime, and the gecko shrugged, scrambled down from the microphone, and disappeared down the aisle. Many of the sleep railroad passengers were already out. Hello. We have again used our lottery system to select a speaker. Will La Luna J. Hamster please make her way to the microphone? Lambden forced his eyes open enough to watch as a tiny hamster scurried down the aisle and climbed up the stool. The moose appeared and adjusted the microphone for her. Um, hi. My speech will be about sweeping the floor. Lambden had to stifle a chuckle, but the rest of the passengers, those who were still awake, seemed delighted with this topic. This is going to be so good. Do you remember the one about vacuuming? That was my favorite. Sweeping the floor is something animals especially mammals and also reptiles, sometimes do because crumbs get on the floor and we don't always feel like eating every single crumb. Some animals, such as wombats, keep brooms in special closets that have hooks, and other animals, like koalas, have bristly brooms that scrape against the floor and make a swishing sound. Oh, actually, I have a funny story about that. One time, my cousin dropped an entire container of pumpkin seeds all over the- Ahem. The moose cut in sharply, and the hamster's eyes went wide. The moose pointed a hoof at a sign on the wall. The sign read, Speech Rules. The first rule was, No Funny Stories. The hamster looked stricken for a moment, then nodded, took a deep breath, and continued. Um, never mind that story. Brooms. When you use a broom, you hold it in your paws and make a back and forth motion on the floor. Lambden watched as more and more passengers drifted to sleep as the hamster continued her meandering speech. It was odd. For a moment, he allowed himself to imagine the performances the sleep train passengers might be seeing. He felt a small sense of longing for his usual weighted blanket. He tried to imagine it snuggled around him. Tried to... Lampton. Is it Lampton the Lamb? Lambden sat up straight. Realizing he had daydreamed through the rest of the hamster's talk, the towering moose's identical twin sister was looking directly at him, her eyebrows raised in expectation. Lamped in the lamb, please make your way to the microphone and begin your speech. Lambden felt sleepy passengers' eyes on him. This had to be some sort of mistake. He was brand new to this whole thing. He couldn't possibly be expected to... Lampton, you are expected to approach the microphone precisely now. Everyone was staring at Lambton. He felt knots return to his stomach. But he got up from his seat. He walked down the aisle. He sat on the stool. The moose glided over and readjusted the microphone for his height. Lambden looked again at the list of rules on the sign. No funny stories. No interesting words. No dancing. He thought of his seatmate reading the book about bicycle wheels. Studying up in case I get picked. Lambden hadn't studied up. 
He had no idea what to make a boring speech about. The passengers were staring at him, waiting. Lambden could feel the moose's eyes on him from off in his periphery. He scratched the wool on his head, something he did now and then when he felt nervous. And just like that, an idea dropped into his mind. Wool. That's it. Lambden thought of the many hours he'd struggled to stay awake in weaving class. Nothing could be more boring than a speech about weaving wool. And so, Lambden launched into the dullest, most sleep-inducing speech the sleep railroad passengers had ever heard. When you weave with a natural fiber like wool, you must first wash your wool with mild soap in order to remove oils and dirt. Immediately, the passenger's eyes began to close. Then you have to brush the wool fibers because sometimes they get matted and tangled. So boring. So very boring. Lambden droned on and on about wool. When he finally finished together and give it a finished look, he looked up to see every single passenger fast asleep. He heard loud snores off to his side and glanced over to see the moose asleep, nearly falling over in her seat. Lambden smiled to himself. He climbed down from the stool. It wasn't until he'd settled back into his seat that he realized everyone was asleep except for him. The train rumbled along through the dark countryside. All around him, animals slept easily. Lambden was wide awake. Calming music continued to filter down from the speakers, and he closed his eyes, trying to allow it to soothe his racing mind. It wasn't until he imagined himself on the sleep train that he began to relax. Guess, hello, keep those eyes open for just a few minutes more to see the utterly miraculous show approaching on our left-hand side. Lambden imagined his weighted blanket cocooning him in his seat. He imagined a performance out the window, lemurs with sparkling hula hoops, wearing top hats. He let himself float away on his daydream. And finally, his mind quieted. Lambden's eyes fluttered open. He sat up in bed and smiled. He hadn't felt this well-rested in months. The previous night came rushing back. The water slide, the bats, the moose's twin. It was all so strange, but it worked. Then he remembered how he'd fallen asleep by imagining himself on the sleep train. Lambden felt uncertainty cloud his mind and realized once again he'd have to make a decision at bedtime. He got up and set off for school, trying to put it out of his mind. It could wait. He had wool to weave. This was a fun one. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe Lambden will return to the sleep railroad someday. You never know. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter K., runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. 
Thank you to Jasmine for the super important reminder message at the beginning. Thank you to the many Little Stories Premium subscribers who supplied sound effects used in this story. Thank you to Eloise, Hannah, Jeremiah, May, Maxwell, Roxy, Cami, Lila, Corinne, Harper, Kara, Freya, Libby, August, Sidra, Eva, Sila, Belle, Claire, Molly, Ali, Imogen, Luciana, Abby, and Lon. And thank you, as always, for listening in.